Yeah. Hey guys, what's up? So uh, today we'll be doing a recitation on diffusion models for image generation. Uh, we'll probably be training the diffusion model with just one image because it takes a lot of time to train the entire diffusion model. Uh, and I think uh, when this recitation gets released, we might not have done the diffusion lecture till now. So I'll just give a very high level overview of what is a diffusion model and how it works so that you guys can have a brief taste of it uh, before the lecture and when the lecture comes you'll probably learn more about the theory of it but in this recitation we'll work on the practical side of uh, this uh, so uh, let's begin uh, so let's talk about the intuition behind the diffusion model so usually you basically sample a real image which is going to be x naught uh, then you take a noise which is usually a Gaussian distribution and you apply a uh, the noise to the image, uh, essentially corrupting that image, uh, and you keep cor corrupting that image for until t time step. So you keep applying uh, noise until t times, until your uh, noise, uh, I mean, until your image becomes completely corrupted. Then what you do is you take a neural network to predict the noise uh, of the uh, that you have put to the image, and then you basically denoise. Uh, the uh, corrupted image to get your actual uh, results and that's the basic uh, uh, that's basically the basic uh, intuition behind it so basically you have an image let's say x naught apply a uh, noise to it let's say z uh, until time step t uh, which gives you a completely corrupted image at time step t let's call it let's call that image xt and uh, you train a neural network with basically the image xt which is completely corrupted and you try to predict the z uh, and once you predict the z you try to remove that noise from the uh, corrupted image to get your original image that's essentially uh, the intuition behind the diffusion model so how it gets done uh, there is a forward process for it and then there is a reverse process for it so we'll talk about that more now so uh, like we said uh, you get a original image x naught apply noise 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 until you get a completely garbage corrupted image called xt that's going to be your forward process so going from x naught to xt is basically your forward process that's basically going to be going from a clean image to a completely noisy image that's your forward process so it's basically forward process just gradually uh, adding noise to the image uh, that's pretty much it and the reverse process is basically you trying to denoise it essentially in the reverse process you try to predict the noise which you apply to uh, the actual image and then you try to denoise it from the corrupted image to get the original image so uh, usually the forward process is uh, hard-coded with Markov chain uh, we'll talk more about that uh, as we come along and probably in the lecture you'll get a better intuition behind all of the uh, formulas and the derivation beforehand but uh, we are not going to be focusing more into that aspect uh, so you just need to know two things for coding up essentially uh, I'll uh, tell you the main formulas also for coding it up we'll try to code up uh, at least the forward process for it uh, backward process is just again going to be one formula for us to code up so uh, this recitation is just for us to learn about uh, the coding aspect of uh, diffusion models so uh, yeah uh, let's go to the next slide yep so uh, this talks about basically our forward process of uh, the diffusion model. Uh, we need to just essentially code up such that uh, we get the corrupted image, which is going to be uh, this formula, if you see over here. And uh, you're probably asking what is alpha t and alpha t is basically just one minus beta t and beta is basically just your variance schedule. That is basically how much uh, noise you're going to add at each time step. That can be uniform. You can do it probably cosine or uniform or anything, whatever you like. Uh, that's totally up to you. But usually I think people do it uh, 
I think uniformly, if I'm not wrong, but uh, it's really up to you guys. Then alpha is just uh, one minus beta t. That basically means uh, how much of the original image still remains. Uh, that's uh, basically alpha t. And uh, the formula over here, which we need to code up for the forward process, is just basically x t is equal to root of alpha t until alpha 1 times x naught, which is going to be your original image, plus root of 1 minus uh, alpha t until alpha 1 times z, which z is basically a noise. Okay, so uh, this is the formula which uh, probably in the lecture they will be showing you the derivation for it and teach you the math behind it. But again, we are not focusing on the max of it. Uh, we will, uh, that's something which you learn in the lecture, but for now we'll just try coding this up. So let's try doing the forward process for it. Uh, so uh, the forward process can be like, put it up and you don't need to actually train the model to see the intuition behind it because uh, it's hard coded. Uh, uh, but for the uh, backward uh, process, which is basically denoising, we need uh, the predicted uh, noise uh, from uh, the model to actually denoise it. For that, we'll probably need to make up the model. Uh, making up the model, I'll probably not show you because it's just going to be a simple unit architecture where we just uh, give the noise an image and we give the time step and basically tell the unit to predict the noise of it. Uh, so for that, uh, I'll probably uh, not like we'll go behind the code of it, but at least let's try coding up the forward process by ourselves uh, and get the actual intuition behind it. So, uh, yeah, how do we start? Uh, okay, so uh, let's start coding up uh, this. Uh, so we basically use this image for it. Uh, cool. So how do we start? First thing is to get the image. So to import the uh, import uh, okay. should be fine. Uh, get this URL as well. So we we'll just be putting up the uh, uh, forward process and for the backward process uh, we'll probably just uh, I'll probably just code it up uh, back end and explain you the code of it which shouldn't take that long so so this URL then Step zero done. Now let's start making our uh, division process. So let's go over here. Uh, what all do we need? So we need our variant scheduler. Uh, 
Uh, before that, you'll probably need to specify what time steps. Uh, and we will get our alphas based on our betas. And uh, getting this, uh, this is essentially called alpha hat. If you look into the original paper, they'll tell you this bit. That's just called alpha hat. So getting alpha hat with the uh, torch is pretty easy. You just uh, okay, come forward, come on. This should be fine. And Z is the noise. Fine. X not is the image. Do a Go. Let's do it. So let's specify the time step. For now, let's put 10. If it's competition is too expensive, we just decrease it. So let's specify our time steps is equal to dodge dot arrange. Gotcha. Let's specify our betas is equal to dodge dot space. Or link space. I think it is dot value to end value to how much ever you want in between. That is going to be T. Gotcha. Okay, I didn't think of torch, so let's do that. So, torch. Cool. That's fine. Just torch. Okay, perfect. Now we need to find alphas, which is basically equal to one. Yes, betas. We need to find alpha uh, basically we are going to find this next which is basically called alpha hat according to the original paper so alpha is very to dodge forward alpha is this is zero from our draw yeah let's just make sure one time uh, yeah, seems correct. Now uh, we'll probably need to use uh, the. Uh, so basically, now we need to get the value of uh, alpha's hat based on the time step. Uh, time step that can easily be done uh, with the torch dot gather command. So see over here. Uh, you can read the documentation further. It just gives you the output values based on the indexes you provide to it. So let's do that. Alpha and T. So if you could do H, no, it should be alpha and dot gather. From that one, you have to give the in dimension, which is going to be the last dimension. Uh, no indexes, basically time steps. Fine. It should technically give the same thing. Yeah, perfect. All right. So now this is fine. Uh, we'll probably need to find the mean next. So mean is just basically, uh, yeah, so mean is just uh, this bit, which is going to be alpha, I mean, which is going to be alpha hat times your input image and variance is just going to be your, uh, this bit, which is basically uh, one minus alpha hat square root times the noise. So just that, so mean is Yeah, I didn't write X not. So, yeah, this is not anyway. mm, Oh. All right, so yeah, uh, let's put go to mm, touch, touch, 
Hope that works. Uh, okay, I'm gonna be uh, images dot to tensor. Hmm. Let's Seems to be fine. is very big so you might need to release it but, uh you might need to release it further to decrease the computation of time but that will be got this to run for now uh variance uh, will be It's just gonna be a Gaussian distribution. So no, don't stop. Yeah. Let's go. have some certain shape errors or something but yeah we will let our features also decide that let's make a function out of this i would say def let's write it as diffusion forward Do it. 
and then that should be fine. So motion is made. Yeah. So this is our forward definition essentially. Uh, we'll just probably need to verify it and for that uh, we'll probably like play around with it. So just remove this and first thing I would say is to probably play change of power image so let's reduce our image shape image shape equal to change it to 128 apply say one more important thing to uh, note is uh, we would uh, basically like to scale our data from 0 to 1. Uh, basically if you see over here uh, the image uh, like what two tensor does is it scales the image uh, to basically uh, 0 to 1. So if I had to show you See over here all the values are between zero to one uh what we would like to do essentially is to scale it between minus one to one because uh, that's how uh, we define our Gaussian distribution so it's better to scale it between uh, minus one to one with that we do something like this transform start and uh, we basically make our own function for this where we define what we need to do Little d Times two. Oh, right, so on. So if the image had a pixel of zero, it would basically make it minus one. If the image had a pixel of one, it would be one times two, which is minus one, which is going to be one. So yeah, this works. And okay, very much great. For this bit, yeah, sounds good. So now uh, let's just see how we can uh, make our like let's see how our diffusion model forward works. So, so let's say no, no, we can't do not this. Uh, so p is equal to ten. Right outside. Uh, we write image is equal to transform of images, which is just made. Uh, we might need to make batches of this to basically see how it works for 10 time steps. So, batched of batches of image. Gonna be equal to touch touch that let's stack them up and it's gonna be uh, G, uh, that's fine yeah uh, let's specify this that 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 no uh, oh so I think so just it done so basically, if you see the formula again, it's just gonna be this plus this. So it's just gonna be return games. Uh, we can also return noise, but uh, at least for now we don't need the noise, but uh, we need the noise when we do the uh, backward process. But that's fine. Cool. So. We get the noisy image from our noise is equal to the diffusion forward. Uh, this is going to be branches of the image from our uh, uh, essentially. And 
It's not going to work. Drop each individual image. I don't know how it's okay. So, for... I do that. Image in... Image, yeah, image. Oh, uh, okay. oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. One of the important things is like, okay. So our diffusion process gets uh, the thing mean plus variance and all that. But uh, again, uh, it will just show you a bunch of garbage. So we cannot have that. Uh, so to go back to the original uh, noisy side of the image, we probably need to put the reverse transformations on it as well. So for that, uh, we can define our reverse transforms for it. So first thing is to bring it back to the scale between uh, uh, zero to one. So for that, we'll probably need to Define lambda again. And, uh, this one it would become zero. Correct. This. Perfect. It's correct. Then let's transform start. Uh, so this is in currently. I think if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, yeah, I think. For PIL, the images are supposed to be in 120, like the channels are supposed to be in the last dimension. So I think we might need to do that as well. So, uh, yeah, so let's do that. Image. Yeah, that should be 
This is just to get the image uh, from the body. So, so. we can technically do it at least, but yeah, it's fine. So don't uh, so basically we'll need to just convert it to numpy and just need to make sure that it's in unit eight format. Uh, if I'm not wrong, that was the issue. Let's see. Oh, 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 
okay my bad uh you probably need to convert it to uh uh so th- basically this was in i think this was uh between uh we'll probably need to convert it to like uh probably scale it between uh, uh what you said uh 0 to 255 now uh, that's my bad forgot about it dot so and and t is equal to t times 
but yeah uh, that seems all right so basically what we just did is if you go here uh, from the original paper we just implemented this formula to get our uh, denoised image let's see our final formula over here uh, it's gonna be this bit it's essentially just a uh, script uh, so it's just basically us implementing this formula over here so uh it's nothing that tough uh, uh if you just look into the code uh, it should be fine so if you see over here script uh, recipe alphas it's just one five separate alphas which is basically this bit uh, sorry uh, so yeah, and uh, times x minus uh, beta, so just again, x minus uh, beta, so which is basically 1 minus alpha b. And then if you see, uh, yeah, x minus beta times model, uh, that's basically what your model predicted the noise to be, and then you just divide it by uh, this bit, which is basically this, which is essentially one minus dot dot from cross dot dot x yeah and basically uh if p is equal to equal to zero that's basically if you're trying to predict your original image that's basically you just are returning the mean but uh if it's x t minus one x t minus two so on it's just uh you're just going to be getting mean and variance similar to the forward thing but yeah implementation of backward is pretty very straightforward uh, it's just that uh you need to train your model to essentially do your backward and for that uh, we had to train the entire model from scratch so yeah uh, but yeah uh, nothing too tough even in the backward and it's just simple implementation of this formula uh, it's pretty easy uh, you just go through the code one time you probably see the formula and uh, you'll get it beforehand now uh, this one, uh, I just took, I just forked a simple uh, unit class from uh, as our model for getting our prediction for the noise. Uh, so that had kind of sort of position embedding. It had the clock layers and basically the unit architecture. This was based on ResNet 50 architecture, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, we are not going to focus on the model too much because uh, we are more into seeing how the diffusion model, I mean, how diffusion works by itself, but uh, we're not going to focus into the model. Uh, so just a short summary for the model is that we just used unit uh, architecture to predict the noise. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, these are just the basic stuff. So we just specify the number of epochs, how much time we want to play, print the frequency, the learning rate, batch size, etc. And we just train the model uh, for just one image at this point because uh, we don't want to do a lot of uh, training. Uh, like this is just for an example purposes, but the, you can definitely train the model with uh, any other data so you'd like. You can try it out with CIFAR. It's basically going to be the same thing. You're probably going to change the data loader and probably uh, create your uh, test loader and get your validation thing sorted out in that. But yeah, if you see, uh, in the first epoch, uh, the ground truth was for the noise was this. It predicted pretty badly, but uh, you can see your distribution of noise. The ground truth for your noise was essentially like this and predicted uh, a relatively bad thing in your very first epoch. But as you increase the number of epochs, its accuracy was like pretty very good uh, uh we trained it for like i think 2000 uh that's basically like we tried overfitting uh and its distribution was almost exactly the same and uh, just improved further and further and you can see like it had a really good prediction of the distribution uh and yeah uh if you see it looked almost the same as well your final prediction of noise and when we plot it we can see how it went from uh completely noise to denoising it to uh the cat image which we had used so again uh if you see we just 
put image as some random noise. Uh, we just called in the diffusion models backward. Uh, and we just got this image from essentially noise. Now, uh, this is how essentially diffusion works. It's pretty simple once you understand the concept behind it. Uh, again, we did not focus on the theory bit, we just focused on the application bit. And the application bit was just implementing the forward and the backward. Uh, that was pretty straightforward. Uh, I think another thing to note was, yeah, uh, I probably wanted to just share this as well. Uh, if you see our unit just printed to the noise and the noise basically, uh, we do the MSC calculations between uh, the actual noise and the predicted noise. So, uh, uh, basically, uh, we just did the MSC loss for this case, but uh, people use scale divergence plus MSC loss, which is a good thing to do as well. Uh, but since uh, we just focused on a simple example, we just used MSC loss. Uh, and yeah, as you see over here, first thing we do is we make the image very noisy. We give that noisy image to the unit to predict the noise. And then we do the loss calculation between the noise and predict noise. And that's how the training works. Uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, recitation. Uh, feel free to ask any doubts on Piazza if you guys want to. Uh, but yeah, uh, this unit model is just basically forked from the uh, internet, any uh, GitHub repository, you can get it. Uh, uh, the main implementation of diffusion was essentially the forward and backward, which you just did. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I hope uh, after this recitation, you'll probably know how to code up uh, the diffusion model. Uh, and integrate it and probably run a pipeline. Uh, as an example, you guys can try it out with so far. So it shouldn't be that different from what we just did right now. Probably just the data loader bit might be different and a little bit different in how you do your training. Just basically you need to do a validation as well. Uh, apart from that, everything is fine. So I hope this recitation was helpful at least to uh, help you guys got it how to you make efficient models and how to train it and how it and get a small intuition pattern and how it works as well. Uh, the theory bit again it will be covered in the lectures. So uh, we didn't focus on the theory bit, but yeah, I hope this recitation was helpful for you guys and uh, see you guys around. So take care, enjoy, uh, enjoy your uh, spring carnival. Take care. See you guys. Bye.